in your crew car. So unlike other events where the grooms or crew stay at the venue, in endurance up to four of your crew, um, you can have anything between one to four crew and the rider, go out in a vehicle out on course to designated crew points to meet the horse and rider throughout their loops. So I thought I'd go through what's in my crew car, kind of the basic bits and bobs. Everyone will be different, there'll be some things that actually I'll switch in and out depending on the distance, depending on the horse, but these are kind of the, the core elements of our car crew kit. So kind of the core kit that I've always got in a crew car kind of starts with the car itself. Um, so we have our emergency car kit. This also has a tow rope, jump leads and a self-starting jump motor, all the high vis like normal stuff you need for breaking down the things to change a tyre, make sure you've got a spare tyre in that car as well. Um, just basic car stuff um, to help keep it running if anything happens. Um, also got the electrolyte and ready soaked sugar beet to refill the water buckets that we've got in the car. Um, then we've got the trusty slosh bottles. Um, this box is probably older than me. But it's so sturdy and it's got holes in the bottom so that any water just drains out so you're not carrying extra kind of water you don't need that's sloshing around. Make sure you've got a rug in the car in case you need to stop out on course, like you're pulling up um, or you've lost a shoe and you're waiting for the ferry so the horse doesn't get cold. Um, the same thing, for the same reason, I've got a lead rope in my spare bag, but we'll go through what's in there in a minute. We also have a... Um, Ice box, that's got the ice that we use to put in the slush bottles um, or to put in the water that goes in the slush bottles. And then we've got rider food and drink and crew food and drink. It's really, really important as crew that you stay hydrated and you eat as well. So be as kind of rigorous with your hydration um, and eating as the, you are with your rider because if, if you're tired, hungry and dehydrated, you're not going to be performing to your optimum either. Um, my personal favourites as a rider out on course are Jaffa Cakes because they're quite quick release energy and then bananas because they're quite slow release energy and I'll have one Jaffa Cake and half a banana at every checkpoint or like crew point. And then I also like to have the LucasAid Lights, I find the other one a little bit sugary um, and sometimes plain water, it depends what I, I want. The crew <laughs> varies and obviously it depends how far um, I'm riding that day but obviously there's Cornish pasties because of Dan. Um, Welsh cakes because you know we've got to we've got to be patriotic about our food choices. Um, but things that are super simple, super simple to kind of snack on: sandwiches, Harry Bow are a firm favourite. Um, kind of crisp sausage rolls, just literally anything to get energy into your crew. Um, then we have so more towards kind of the horse stuff. I have three different drinking buckets, so I'll have plain water, electrolyte, and sugar beet. The more you get to know your horse, the more you'll know what they want. Tizzy does not drink on the first loop. Azid will drink at every opportunity. Tizzy loves Aquaraid from kind of mid loop onwards, and then towards the end loop, she'll prefer sugar beet, sugar beet or plain. Azid doesn't really like sugar beet water, doesn't really like Aquaraid until the kind of the final loops, but really will drink plain water literally all the time. Make sure you've also got a spare bucket. I don't let any other competitors drink out of my drinking buckets, um, and that's because of cross-contamination. But if there's someone out on loop and their crew's not available, my crew will happily fill up a bucket for their horse to drink from. Then we've got water containers. The amount that we have very depends on how many loops we're doing. We usually have a minimum of four for a, like a 40k ride. You never know, you always, need, you always want more than not have enough. Um, so in the spares bag, I've got full tack, so bridle, reins, breastplate, um, a lead rope if I need to hold on to the horse, like if we stopped out on course, a space blanket for a human if they're cold, and we've got the rug for the horse there, and I've got a knife, duct tape, vet wrap, and um, bale of twine, because you can fix most things with that, then stirrups and stirrup leathers. Um, we've also got a spare set of shoes, and I carry a hoof boot with me, or the crew car, or both have hoof boots in case I need to go a short distance without a shoe at any point. We've got a very extensive horse and human first aid kit, 
I'm very lucky that my crew is full of medical personnel, so if ever there's a drama, they are prepared. Um, there are vets, obviously, and they will come out to you out on course if you have an accident, but it's good to have that first aid stuff with you at all times, just in case. Um, I carry a couple of socks um, to go on the underneath the um, hoof boot and also a vet wrap on my saddle just for kind of those quick fixes if, if needed out on course. So I want to share with you a few top tips. Um, one being, make sure you have designated jobs. So whether you have one or four crew, make sure they know what they're doing. So obviously if you've got one, they're going to have to do everything. Um, but if you've got two, one is giving um, water to the horse whilst the other is seeing to the rider. Make sure everyone is super clear about their jobs and also the rider knows what jobs you've designated, designated to which um, crew member as well. Tip number two is systematically refill and set up. So make sure you have a routine that you do every single crew point. A routine kind of brings the stress down, get everyone's, gets everyone in their flow, and it means that everyone knows what's going on. So for example, my crew will reach, say the second crew point, refill anything they've used, set up the crew point, then go to the designated spaces, and they do that every time. So everyone knows what's going on, everyone has a routine, and we find that that works best. Tip three is scan the crew point for potential hazards. If you see like a lot of the horses coming through are slippy on a road, make sure that you go further up from that and tell your rider it's slippy. If you see a stone on the course that looks like it's gonna cause a bruise sole, move it. Make sure that um, you make the area as safe as possible, you've parked in a safe area and you're not blocking the course. The other thing about blocking the course as a rider, um, try not to stop on the course. Make sure there's plenty of room. You don't want horses going behind your bum. You don't want them to kick, kick you. You don't want to kick them. So try and make sure there's plenty of room. But also, if there is a horse blocking the course and that horse is drinking, just wait. Endurance is about horse welfare and as much as your horse as everyone else's. So just wait, wait for the horse to drink and then politely ask to move. Another tip is if you think you've missed your rider out on course, whilst you're going through the crew points, try and note down which number of riders have come before your horse and which number of riders are behind. You'll also kind of get to know the crew of those riders and who you're with in the crew points. Don't be afraid to ask because they're probably doing the same and they will have noted if your horse has gone through. If no one, none of the crew know and none of the riders have seen your horse, normally the crew points will be quite near a checkpoint so you can ask the checkpoint um, also if you've been writing down the speeds of your horse coming into the crew point and you know kind of roughly what average speed they're going then you'll be able to check kind of whether they're in that time frame or not and decide whether to leave the crew point to go to the next one so you don't miss them again or they've just slowed up for some reason and of course you can ring them on their mobile but I never pick up <laughs> If you can, make sure you've recceed the crew points the day before. It's also really good to take your rider so they know what it looks like coming into a crew point and going out because they're the busiest points on course and sometimes can be the most dangerous. Um, either have it on a map and designated points. Crewing is a bit like really slow rally driving where you have a co-driver telling you where to go, you've got a driver, you need to get somewhere, and then turning into a Formula One pit crew team when you get to the crew point to do the horse. Um, obviously, you have to stay within the national speed limit and drive super sensibly. This is around horses. Um, but yeah, so have the designated crew points on a map or you can input them into your GPS, um, but try and recce the route beforehand if you can. And the last tip is to start your crewing day with a full tank of fuel because you don't want to miss your rider out on course or break down because you've run out of fuel. <laughs> I know this might seem like a lot of stuff, but actually you'll probably find that you want more. I've been crewed from tiny, tiny cars, like a Fiat Panda, um, a Peugeot 106 with the smallest boot you've ever seen, up to like a Toyota Land Cruiser or a Nissan Patrol, which have massive boots. You tend to find a way of kind of slotting everything in. And we'll go through how I pack the crew car in a different video. But this is the basics. I hope it really helps you to know what bits and bobs to pull together for your first time packing a crew car, sending a crew out on course to help you out with your, your event. Um, as a novice, you don't have to have a crew. Um, you have to start having crew from up to 64 kilometres onwards. But I really recommend it because if you want to go up through the levels, then kind of starting off with a crew and, and getting your crew used to your horse and your horse used to them and getting used to kind of all the bits and bobs that you do in a crew point is really, really handy for as you progress. 
Um, if you don't have a crew for your novice rides, people out there will help. My crew would happily give you a water bucket, give you half my banana, um, give you a slush and things. So don't be afraid to ask. Happy riding!